Hey everybody, how's it going? So, one of the things that I did to try and make my streams look a little bit better was to get a polarizing filter. A lot of people suggested that I get a polarizing filter to eliminate the reflections that were coming up from the board when I am using flux or when I'm around any sort of bright area. And the problem with that is that the polarizing filter requires that the light be considerably more powerful. And the problem that I've been having with that is that I've had to overclock the light in order to get good results, which is instead of feeding it at 12 volts, I feed it, you know, let's say 13 or 14 or 15 or 16 or 17. And that's been killing my lights left and right. So I want to kind of check out what this one does. So let me just bring this back to the 12 volts that it's rated for so that we can have a fair comparison. Because right now I'm using this light a little bit overclocked, which is not a fair comparison. This is supposed to be at 12 volts. There we go. So this is as bright as the normal microscope light that I have ha goes with a polarizing filter. And sometimes this is nice, sometimes it's good, but when you really want to get nitty gritty and zoom, that's where this light starts to fail. Because remember, the more that you zoom, the less the, the light is going to be able to get through, and the less the light gets through, the crappier your picture. So when I'm over here at 7.5 magnification, it's not really that bad. But if I zoom in all the way to try to look at something really closely, it turns into total shit. Your picture goes to shit. Now, in my eyepieces, it's still fine, but the camera itself needs more light than my eyes do because, I don't know, yeah. I ate my carrots or whatever. Uh, so it works. So I, this has been driving me nuts for a while. So what I did is, you know, I didn't want to lose the polarizing filter because I like that it made the image better for the camera, but I lost the ability to zoom in. So I kept overclocking my light. So I, I've been sending it 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 volts, and the light doesn't really like that very much. So I'd like to show you what I got to fix this. Also, I got a new overhead tripod. That's going to be coming in soon. It's not here yet, but I'd really like to make these board repair streams better. So I got that as well. So here I have... This is a microscope light that I spent $310 on because I'm a dumbass. And if you take a look, you can see that if I had done even the tiniest bit of research before buying this thing, it's actually cheaper to get on Amazon than it is to get from Amscope's own website. Yeah, so I bought this for $302.99 in free shipping, but if I had bought it on Amazon, it would have been $288 in free shipping. And since I'm a dumbass and didn't shop around, and I bought it straight from Amscope's website rather than Amazon, I, you know, I lost 14 bucks. But losing 14 bucks when you've spent this insane amount of money on a microscope, or just a light, is, it, it doesn't really matter at that point. You know, I spent $302 in a freaking microscope light. The first microscope that I bought was an Amscope SC400. That thing was 175 bucks. You can actually get, Amscope is not really unique in a lot of the products they sell. As I showed with the microscopes that I was selling, you can get something that has a better attachment up here for a com comparable price. I was just getting fucked by tariffs because apparently when you buy something that is, if you want a tariff exemption, you need to apply for the tariff exemption very soon after it's put into place. So the companies that have been selling in the industries, otherwise known as, the, as the, the cronies, can apply for the exemption, but newcomers can't. But the point is, before I got out of that business because I was getting owned by tariffs that other companies don't have to pay, but we do, most of this stuff like Omano, Amscope, all this crap, it's, it's kind of the false concept of branding. It's mostly the same stuff. But my first microscope was $175. This light costs almost twice as much as my first microscope. So we're going to unbox this baby. And uh, let's take a look at what you get for $310 when you buy a light. So let's take a look. This is my order. And what do you get in the box here? You get operation instructions. Fuck that. It comes with some fuses. I'm sure we could just use some aluminum foil from when I get my bagel in the morning to do that. We get a power cord here. And then we get this cable thing that goes to the ring. So let's have some fun. Let's hook this baby up and see how much brighter this thing is. Is this $300 brighter than my $20 light? One way to find out. All right, so we have packaging material here. These streams are gonna look much better, I hope. More packaging material here. All right. Ah, that smells like new power supply smell. That's what this smells like. 
Whoa. Okay, this this is a cool switch. I like this. Wow. Oh my gosh. But ordering through Amscope, less chance of getting a uh, back massager by mistake. Yes, less chance of getting an essential item. So this is going to output a bunch of light, and I imagine this is a fiber optic cable that is going to plug in there. So this... There's no way in hell I'm reading a manual to figure out how to use a light. Fuck that. So, maybe we should probably clean that a little. I got a nice clean microfiber cloth over here. Just make sure that's nice and clean. I'm guessing this goes in here. And then screws in. Like so. Alright, so now we're going to open up this thing. This rubber band is not functioning the way I want it to. If you can... Die, rubber band, die. Oh. Huh. So this is the light. I have no idea how this is supposed to work, but let's see. So this is my microscope head. First thing I kind of want to do is just turn it on. Yeah, I just kind of want to see, see, see how the light comes out of this thing. Definitely not reading the manual. Screw that. This is some weak ass light. I fucked something up, clearly. Perhaps I should read the manual. Yo, this is some weak shit. Yeah, first thing, let's tighten this here. So, do this. Whoa, okay, you can adjust the intensity. Whoa, okay, there we go. So, I didn't have this screwed in all the way. Let me get you for that, Christopher Kelly. You know, fucking Bitcoin millionaires in my chat thinking they can give me money when I say top. All right, so first thing to do, let's just make sure this is all the way in there, nice and tight. The next thing I'm gonna do is figure out how to get this thing attached onto my actual microscope. So it comes with this thing, but I don't know what the hell, like, uh, what does this thing do? This goes here? No. All right, so I'm gonna unscrew the microscope light that I have here. Wait, Try this thing on. This is a really unwieldy beast of a of a cable going here. So if you have, like, you th think about it. My normal microscope light, my microscope, I went back and forth. All I have is this little sissy cable. But this has this, this whole chain thing, which kind of makes putting it on here a little bit more difficult. But no worries. Got to unscrew this all the way. Okay. Now we got the light. Now these thumb screws don't have, they don't really have much in terms of grip, so it's kind of hard to get them tighter. Yeah, like this, this, the thumb screws on the $20 microscope light uh, are, are kind of like hybrid flathead screws, so you can, you know, you can do this. It's got the grip on the side, but it also has the flathead. Whereas these ones don't have that, so it's a bit more of a pain in the ass to attach, but what are you going to do? I also got to clean the side of my microscope. I clean this thing constantly, but it always winds up getting flux or whatever on it. So now, let's just test the same thing that we were doing before with this light. So I am going to zoom all the way out. And as you can see, I see nothing because I have no light. I'm going to slowly turn this thing up. Got to say, this is a weird color. Okay, we can turn it out. We can turn it up. All right, so this is all the way up. All right, now let's see if I zoom in. I can zoom in all the way and honestly,
Let's see, is this worth $310 over my $20 light? Uh, I will let you decide in a moment. So remember, the problem is when we're fully zoomed in. When we're all the way zoomed in is when this thing gives me an issue. So this is all the way zoomed in. This is the new one. So now I'm going to switch back and forth rapidly between this and the old one, all right? This is the old one. Old light. Let's just adjust the white balance and the auto exposure. All right, so this is the old light. This is, the reason it's shaky is because this is all the way zoomed in. It's going to be a little bit... So when I'm zoomed all the way out, the difference between the two bulbs is minimal. It doesn't, it doesn't really seem to matter. But once you zoom in all the way, that's... When I'm zoomed in all the way, even with the exposure all the way turned up there, I'm still getting a garbage picture. Now, if I go over to this $310 insane light, sexy light, I just came and you owe me new pants. There's no way in hell that you came from this little light. Now, if you look at this one, the, the white balance is very, very different. This is a much warmer light. But as you can see, when I zoom in all the way, I actually have a much better picture. So in the beginning, I didn't think it was that much better, but I think it was because I forgot how bad the original one was. So this one is, this is a better light. I'll give it that. It's a better light. Is this $280 better? This is not $280 better than this. This should be able to be much brighter than what I get. Like, again, is it an improvement over this? Yes, it's an improvement in the last few yards. But this is not, no, this is not a, this is not a $310 light. So let's see, if I wanted to go up in lighting, let's say I was, uh, all right, so this is the light, right? Now watch what happens when I switch off of the halogen and I go to the LED. It's completely blue because the white balance is set for the other one. And if I go from the LED to the halogen, this is, <laughs> like, this is, this is a, clearly, clearly, and it's not a problem because I have, um, I have a camera that will adjust for this. But this is very, very clearly a warm LED. I mean, not a, it's a, the halogen is warm. It's not a cool light. This is a cool light, and I'm definitely going to be able to produce much higher quality videos with it because I can use the polarizer filter and re eliminate reflections while simultaneously not losing finer detail when I zoom in that was lost by the old light that wasn't able to go bright enough. The downside is the noise. However, at the end of the day, there's quite a bit of noise in the store as is, which is why I have the microphone that's close to my mouth. If I'm soldering and I have a fume extractor plus a hot air station on, I don't think the additional noise created by this is bad. Check out the LED ADMB. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. But at the end of the day, I think I'm going to be able to do some better videos with this. Is this light $280 better than my old one? Absolutely not. Is it better? Yes. And I appreciate the upgrade. So that's that. See you in the next video. And as always, I hope you learned something. Hey, everybody. So one of the things that one of you pointed out is that my camera has HDR. And I believe I was using it at the lowest, if not, not even on setting. That's pretty stupid if I'm doing if the entire reason that I purchased a different microscope light is that when I have something that is really, really uh, zoomed in or close up that, that you can't see it under light, the lighting. Of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look under an LP8550. We're going to do the same thing with full zoom, but I'm going to turn HDR up a little bit. Now, the more I turn up the HDR, the more washed out the image is. But let's see if we can get a little bit more of an idea of what it is that's going on at full zoom when I have that on there. So I'm going to first put on this one. This is the normal standard cheap ass ring light that I was showing you from earlier. So I'm gonna switch over to the microscope light. Obviously you can see that because I was using the halogen bulb that the white balance is way off. So we're just gonna switch that. Now, as I said, you get a fairly good image with this. You get a fairly good image and for even if you're like a little zoomed in. It's only when you try to zoom in all the way at like 100% that you then start to realize that you can't see anything anymore. Even if I have the exposure all the way up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the HDR. And the reason I didn't see this is because usually my open broadcaster window is shrunk so that I can see that your chat on the screen as I'm streaming. So I can't really read or make out what these things say under here. Now if I turn up the HDR, you'll see that I can still, I can see the balls a little bit better now. Like it's easier to make them out, even with the, because remember the polarizer filter is going to be taking away some of my light. So that is balls underneath the LP8550. 
or if I want, I can zoom in on, let's say, this connector. So this is what I was zooming in on before. And when I zoom in all the way, see? See that? So now at least I can see it, even if I'm not getting the greatest detail. And again, you can turn up HDR more, but once you turn up HDR to this level, stuff really starts to look kind of washed out. So if I take a look at something familiar, like let's say, you know, could be leave a RAM chip power area or something like this, you can see that you really do lose a lot of the, the black levels when you have HDR turned up like that. You lose a lot of it. It's better to have your exposure a little up and less HDR for image quality. But now let's just take a look. So we had this over here for underneath an LP8550. And remember, I was turning up the HDR in order to really see under there at full zoom. And now let's take a look and see what that looks like instead of with this $22 light with this $310 M-scope light. I'm just going to put that back on. This is going to be the halogen bulb. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, obviously, I've got to reset my white balance because this looks freaking ridiculous. You do get a better picture, and you can turn the HDR a little bit down. See, right now the HDR is turned up a lot, so you're getting a ridiculous picture. But you can turn the HDR down and still get a quality picture. Can you take a look uh, here at this connector? I can zoom all the way in on the trackpad connector. I can do this. And I can see everything at a lower HDR, which means that I'm going to have better black levels in the camera. Now I can turn HDR up. Sorry, I'm, I actually have to hit the buttons in the camera to control this. And once I turn HDR up, then I get a really, really clear, clear image. So let's see. So I'm going to take a look at a ball underneath the LP8550. Again, something that's really difficult to see. Fully zoomed. All right, that's with the halogen. I'm going to take a look at these two balls. OK, now let's try and switch really quickly over to the LED. And as you can see, when I switch over to the LED, what was visible before is now barely visible. Even after I change the white balance, you can see that the LED, this one, at the LED at full brightness is still missing quite a bit. And in order to, turn, to actually really see much, you've got to turn the HDR up quite a bit. So even taking into account HDR, the LED light that is $22, falls a lot behind this one. However, that being said, this light that I have is not in any way, shape, or form $280 better than the LED. This only makes sense to switch to something like this if you're doing videos like I am and you're, do, you're trying to do it on some sort of professional level so that people can see things a little bit better when you zoom in all the way. Because usually what I'm forced to do even if I want to zoom in more to show you something, I don't do that further zooming in. And I work in certain areas when I should be zooming in, I'm not, because you won't be able to see it in the camera. Now that will help me get around it. But I really don't think it makes sense for virtually any normal person to spend this much extra money on this. You, you can decide for yourself. That's what the quality difference is with and without HDR. So you're welcome to make your own, you're welcome to come to your own conclusions from this video. A lot of people have asked, why don't I just make my own LED? Why don't I just, if you take a look at this, there's, I don't know, like 64, 90, 144 LEDs in this thing. I don't want to desolder 144 LEDs and then solder 144 of my own in. That's going to take a ridiculous, insane amount of time. And the amount of time that it would take for me to do that, I could probably do several border pairs, which would make me way more money than the amount of money that I spent on this light. So this light is about 310 bucks, less if you buy it from Amazon. I'm a dumbass, and I actually went to Amscope's website directly, silly me. This, so if I fix a board in 10 or 20 minutes, then 
I, I'm better off than I am if I did not fix a board in that time, but I spent half an hour researching what LED to get, and then an hour doing the soldering job to get rid of all these LEDs and solder in new ones. That would be in a lot of time invested. But I'm kind of debating whether I should do it, just out of sheer stubbornness at this point, if people are interested in it. And if you can uh, show me a, a light that has... Uh, you know, an LED that's of really high quality because it's hard to find them. You either find these LED light ring lights that are over a thousand bucks, which is crazy, or you find LED ring lights that are 22 bucks, and then you find the branded ones where they take the $22 one and they charge you, you know, $150 just because it has someone's name on it. But if someone has an idea for some LEDs that have a really high CRI, like a really quality LED that can take some power, and I may do a video where just for the hell of it, even though it is kind of a waste of time, I go through it and I desolder all these and solder those in just to see what it looks like out of curiosity. But that's about it. Uh, hopefully you learned something about these expensive lamps now, and I will go on to do some videos before my bulb dies. <laughs> see you all in the next video.